Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of the newcomer series for Grim Dawn, we are going to be talking about blacksmithing, crafting, which is the same thing, sorry, and relics. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about different stuff going on in the blacksmith, which is one of the vendors, but uh, blacksmiths are different depending on which town that you are in in this game. So there's a little bit of nuance to them, but we'll talk about that. It's a YouTube video. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe your heart out. And then if you are at all paying attention to my build in the background, I'm just kind of showing you what we've still got. And that is definitely going to change the further that we go. But let's hop over here to Duncan real quick. I'll show you a couple of the tabs, a little bit of an overview. We are looking at uh, number one. The first tab is going to be your runes and... Uh, relics tab that is going to be your final gear slot um, so it's the only empty one you can see on the screen right now it's right to the left of our belt uh, but all that being said we'll dive a little bit deeper into that in and of itself I'm just checking my damage types currently because I have been playing a different class while I'm not recording for this one and just a wee bit confusing when you've got something very similar but isn't the same so uh, that being said, this class is doing a lot of physical damage and will also eventually be trending towards fire and fire retaliation damage. So I'm just taking a look at all of my abilities to make sure the relic that I pick up matches what I'm building. Now, empowered relics are going to be the uh, first tier of uh, relics that you can actually craft. And even then, a couple of them have some pretty steep level requirements. Uh, based on where we are right now. So since we're only level 20, this is as far as we can go. And what we're going to do is actually um, filter this down to just relics that do fire damage. Because uh, I don't want the physical ones right now, and there are no fire retaliation uh, relics that are available to us at the moment. So all you got to do up top is type the fire, uh, fire damage, and then it turns out there is... Uh, two of them that are uh, level 25 requirements, so we're going to go with Calamity since that's only level 18. And we have one Tainted Brain Matter that we've gotten from the Warden after slaying that guy. Don't mind the 30 over 1 over there, that's just because I have 30 in the stash right now. But you, as a player, if this is your first time through, will always get one from the Warden which you can use in this position to get yourself an easy empowered relic, which will really round out your gear, and you should have a full slot. Uh, now, moving down to the transcendent relics and the mythical relics, these are all very, very high level capped uh, relics, and they are going to require a lot more ingredients to them. So we'll kind of get more into that as the video goes on but just remember when you are looking at those you'll likely be closer to level 40 uh, and onward and then after that for the mythicals you'll be closer to like level 70 to 100. Uh, but the next tab up is going to be your melee weapons you can see that we can make uh, both rares magical um, also legendary there are also set items um, you can do this with everything this is melee weapons uh ranged weapons and armor um all of that stuff being uh, uh dictated by the recipes that you pick up out in the the world so you can purchase those from vendors uh which are like the quartermasters which you can get from each town with reputation you can purchase those um and then sometimes you'll just find them from random enemies. Uh, enemies will drop them. They'll pop up in random shrines and chests. You get recipes basically everywhere. But recipes will, at the end of the day, finish up every... Or they'll fill out your, your blacksmith's crafting ability. So when you pick up a recipe, you just right-click it. It goes right to all the blacksmiths. So you never have to worry about going to a specific one. But you'll just craft whatever that recipe is. And then the uh, final tab is your components tab. That's going to be your... Uh, rings, your medals, your amulets, and then your components. This is probably the tab that you're going to end up spending the most time on because components in and of itself are uh, what you're going to need the most of to craft everything else in all of those other tabs. So in the component tab, you'll likely be um, mashing all that stuff together to create the right component or the right relic to create the item that you want to get. 
Uh, right now, I'm just going for a different metal because the one that I currently had equipped wasn't giving me the stats that I wanted. But we're going to move down to Marnay, get the uh, quest turned in here, and then head out into Act 2 of the game. Ooh. Now, all that being said, we can kind of uh, talk in the background here about the, the blacksmithing stuff too, because it is a lot more complex than I uh, initially started off. Uh, but, um, ultimately, let's see, where do we begin here? Well, I suppose we can just start with the relics, since they're the first tab. Uh, relics... Obviously, you could see how many I had uh, in the, the relic menu. There were a lot, uh, but I got most of those by purchasing or finding the recipes from um, enemies throughout the game. And then when you're playing this the first time through, you will definitely have access to way, way fewer. Uh, now, that being said, um, some of your... Uh, we're actually just damage checking right now. The, the relic that I picked up, Calamity, has only a 5% chance to activate the ability that you get with it. Um, and it only happened once in that little training dummy test right there, which is a little bit disappointing, but at the same time, it's not that bad, because I really just want it for the stats anyway. Um, but, as far as the, the relics themselves go, um, there are a couple that require... Uh, monster recipes and some of those are really they go down the the, the relic chain um, into the transcendent and mythicals uh, and they're actually really difficult to find one in specific or one specifically in particular is going to be the uh, the Mistborn talisman Mistborn talisman is something that you have to farm out of a troll boss uh, which is still in act two uh, but it's way further down than we are, and I believe, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, uh, last time I checked, this was like a 12% chance for that boss to drop this specific recipe, uh, which was a massive pain in the ass to collect when I was trying to get it, but obviously once you pick it up, it is 100% uh, yours, you never have to get it again, you don't have to go through that awful farming routine. Oh, another monster shrine. This is actually... This is usually here. I don't think that there's ever been a time where I've come through this act and this monster shrine hasn't been here. So definitely come up here and rip it if uh, if you need to. But it is it's worth it. That guardsman's hammer, um, you're going to be seeing that, I believe, in the next episode. But for the moment, remember that I picked that up. Because that is a really good item early on, especially if you're, building, uh, if you're playing a soldier. Really, really, really good stuff. Uh, there's also a, a monster and frequent helmet we picked up right there. One of the bandit uh, fire helmets. That is going to make sense a little bit later. But for the time being, um, yeah, we got the, the Guardsman's Hammer. So that's going to be super cool later on. Just got to go back to Devil's Crossing. Dump all these items that I forgot to sell. And then report back to Mornay to get some XP. So we can venture further down the, the path. Um... Where were we, though? Uh, but, let's see. So, the, the relics. Um, yeah, we did talk about the, the tainted brain matter that you get from the, the warden. Um, one thing I'll mention, too, that's not really related to relics, but more related to the crafting material that you need for the relics. If you notice, uh, all the purple stuff is typically what you're going to need uh, at least baseline to craft relics, whether they're transcendent, empowered, or mythical, any of them. Uh, and they will either be a tainted brain matter, they will be a uh, ancient heart is the other one, and then blood of Cathan is the third. Uh, so those three, there are also a couple others, um, the ethereal missive, the wendigo spirit, and then the manticore eye. Th so there's six purple crafting materials which are hard to find they don't drop very often uh, but if you ever get in a position where you have uh, a recipe that calls for either a tainted brain matter an ancient heart or a blood of Cathan, there are uh, there are actually cursed smiths out in the world uh, specifically in acts four in the necropolis there is a smith who can change 
a uh, a tainted an ancient heart or a blood of Cathan into any of those others. So, as long as you have the money and you talk to that specific guy, you can change the crafting material to the one that you need. Uh, and then the same thing can be said for the cursed smith in Ashes of Malmuth. Um, so he's an Act 5 guy. He's... Uh, I think he's in, like, Malmuth outskirts or something like that. But he can change the Wendigo spirits, the... Uh, ethereal missives and the manticore eyes. Uh, yeah, we, he can he can change those or transmute them into the other ones. So as long as you know where those two guys are, I can't show you right now because we haven't actually found them in the store yet because they're way further down. But um, those guys will always make sure that you have the right crafting material as long as you have at least one of the materials required. Woo. Got it? Cool. I know it's a lot of information for some later game topic, but now that that is out of the way, we've got all the uh, squishy body part requirements for crafting. Um, yeah. Oh, so back to the relics. Uh, when you pick up your first empowered relic, you'll notice that all you have to do is put in components, typically. Uh, just components and then your tainted brain matter or what have you. Uh, this is Steven Skinner you're seeing on the screen. He, he is always here. Uh, you can persuade him to set his family on fire. I mean, that was what he was going to do in the first place, but I try not to do that because people burning alive isn't really my favorite thing, even if they're fake people. But you can fuck up that exchange, so just remember to read when you're doing it and pick the right prompts. Uh, he will give you a ring and some XP. Um, also, the first uh, the first run-in with uh, Kaiman's Chosen is this uh, this lore piece uh, that has so conveniently been knocked off of the screen. Kaiman's Chosen is a, a faction of enemy or friendly, depending on how you play the game. Uh, but they're going to show up a lot more in the Forgotten Gods expansion, and they're actually a... Uh, well, I won't ruin it, but, you know. The game makes them kind of relatable, if we're being honest. Kind of, kind of relatable, if you really pay attention to it. So, we'll just put the lore up here for now. If you want to read it, it's there. Kind of scroll through while the game is going. But uh, don't underestimate how cool this game makes a lot of the enemies. The, the factions, the, the bosses, all that stuff. It is actually really, really neat. Um... But right, so the empowered relics don't cost a whole lot. They don't require a whole lot of crafting material. Uh, the problem is that once you get up to your transcendent relic, which is the next tier of relic, your crafting materials are suddenly going to involve you needing empowered relics. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a big deal to begin with because empowered relics, they only require components. But after you get the transcendent relics done, you're going to move up to mythical which are then going to require you to use transcendent relics in their recipes. And then sometimes the mythical um, relics will actually force you to use some transcendent and mythical relics to make. Uh, so the relic recipes get really convoluted. The further that you go, the later that you get into the game. So just remember, it is going to be harder to craft things and you are going to have to dump more effort into finding the right materials and items to make the relic that you want to. Now we're going to go down into this pit right now. This has a devotion shrine in it uh, for the moment. I am not going to pick it up because this is off the beaten path for the devotion shrines and we'll do another video for Act 2 about where all these uh, devotion shrines are. Ones that we don't just happen upon through normal progression. So I'll go back. We'll do a video for all of the ones that are not just walked upon so you guys can see where to go to pick those up and it'll be good and hopefully we'll have something else to talk about at that point because if it's just a video of me walking to places I can't imagine it'll be super interesting uh, the other reason that I came down here into this though instead of just walking by is because there are um, the the ghostly enemies that you're seeing right now actually drop some pretty decent monster in frequency I don't know that they're specifically going to be good for this class but they're a pretty big XP boost, and there is a boss down here that'll give us a big chunk of XP as well, and I do want to knock him out 
pick up this stuff and uh, be on my way. Um, yeah, but back to the, uh, so in, in reference to the relics and whatnot, just remember if you are trying to get one of those specifically, they are going to require you do a little bit of grinding, uh, especially if you're shooting towards one of the um, the higher end ones towards the end of the game. Um, but why are relics so important? Um, mostly the, the relics are giving you very decent stat boosts, uh, but nine out of 10 times, they are also gonna give you a very strong uh, ability attached to them. So in the instance of Calamity, our current uh, empowered relic, it's not the greatest thing in the universe, uh, but that's mainly because it's just a base relic, and it's a 5% chance to shoot out a bunch of AoE fireballs, um, which do a decent chunk of damage, and if you're building fire, obviously that's that's a thing that you can do. But um, the further that you get in the game, the, the relics will actually open up a really big niche for your build. Um, so if you're taking, for example, uh, there's a, a, a mythical relic called uh, Nemesis. And then Nemesis is actually going to give you the ability to summon a, a pet that you can only do with this relic. Uh, it's called, the, the ability is just summon Nemesis. Uh, but the, the summon Nemesis pet is a pet that is going to scale off of player bonuses. Um, and then obviously... If you remember from when we were talking about that, player bonuses means that your pet is going to derive all of its damage from your, uh, in this case, you'll want to have something like pierce and cold damage when you're, you're taking um, Nemesis. So it would scale, the pet would scale off of your cold damage that your character is doing. Uh, take into account the fact that Nightblades also have an end game pet called, uh, I think it's Whirling Blades? Uh, but those are those are a pet that you can get two of, two summons of, that are invincible. They never die, um, and they also scale off of player bonuses. So that relic, the Nemesis relic, plus a Nightblade build that is using Whirling Blades, has three pets that are all scaling off of um, player bonuses, on top of whatever devotions that you have, whatever gear that you have. Um, to make them, you know, further beefy. Uh, and then those pets obviously can all be directed with the, uh, the pet attack button. But you can see where I'm going. There are, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of things that the relics do to fill out a kit or to further buff a kit that your abilities don't do or maybe your gear doesn't have the ability to do. That's what the relic slot is for, and that's why you want to specifically build into one, especially towards the late game when your build is fleshed out, so you can uh, further push whatever part of the kit that you want to, or maybe cover for a part of the kit that uh, you know isn't doing what you want to do. It maybe you want a more defensive relic, and you uh, opt for something like fortress or juggernaut um, because you don't have enough defensive options so those all that stuff exists and all that stuff is just really really helpful uh, not only that but the the nemesis um, and other mythical relics will give you stuff like plus one into all skills and then pretty decent anywhere from like 60 to 100 percent um, increased damage in cold or fire or physical whatever so Remember, uh, it, it obviously doesn't mean a whole lot to you right now at this part of the game, but when you're playing towards the end game, that is what you're building towards, and that'll ultimately make it more fun. I promise. Really, that's all that we're trying to do at the end of the day is get to the end game and have more fun. Now, the, the next three tabs on the blacksmith are just like your vendors. I mean, it's your ranged weapons, your melee weapons, and your armor. Not a whole lot of special stuff there, but... Um, you know, you can craft legendaries, you can craft set items. It's all based on recipe, so you still have to find that stuff out in the world. Uh, but there's not really a whole lot more to, to you know, talk about. 
find a recipe you like if you really want to have the blacksmith make your shit and uh you know have a have a good time have a good time uh let's see what else have we got oh right and the last thing about the um the blacksmith that i didn't mention earlier the blacksmiths all have a specific set of stats that they will craft on an item that you make now i know that didn't make sense the way that i said it but for example, the first blacksmith, Duncan, or Angram, if you went with Angram for whatever reason, because you're a terrible person, uh, but the first blacksmith will actually craft weapons, uh, and he will give you one of three stats on anything that he crafts. Uh, it is either going to be energy regeneration, um, he is going to give you physique, or he is going to give you physical damage. So any of those three stats can pop up on items that he crafts for you. And that is actually going to be different depending on which blacksmith that you go to. So there are blacksmiths in Homestead and Fort Icon, the further that you get into the game, that will give you different stats. So your build may uh, end up being something that you want to find a specific blacksmith to build with for. Um, but you can find those stats uh, next to the crafting button anywhere that you go. Uh, anytime that you find a blacksmith, there's a little emblem to the left of the crafting button that will show you what exactly they are building for you. Um, but yeah, that was the last little blurb for that. Oh, and I think that's going to do it for the blacksmith and crafting information that I've got for you. Let's go get Stephen Skinner's family ring. His family is now safe in the prison. They are not on fire, and he gave us a little bit of XP. I forgot to pick up this side quest while we were over here going through the first bit of the game, but we can get some fabric and make the prison a little bit nicer for the people stuck in here. <sighs> um, and then, oh, right. Uh, I am actually going to be crafting the... Oh, the... There's a set. Guardsman's. Guardsman's Remont. Uh, you might not see it in this video, but we'll have it at least in the next video. But since we got the Guardsman's Hammer, we're going to be building that set to, um, well, help farm, honestly. We just need to build up XP. We need to do more damage, and I have an idea that that will be pretty helpful for us. There is the Arcane Forging, though. You can see it on the bottom side of the screen. Uh, that was all the stats that Duncan can give you when you're forging. So super helpful, especially in the early game. But that is going to do it for me, everybody. Here is where the build currently lies. Again, feel free to like, comment, subscribe your heart out. And we will be back tomorrow to continue down the newcomer path. Peace out.